We asked if you were interested in sending in your own replays for us to analyze, and we didn't expect many submissions. But boy, did you guys show up. We got a ton of submissions, but we were only able to pick two replays for this video. However, due to popular demand, we're gonna make this into a continuous series. This video was a lot of fun for us to make and extremely helpful to you guys as well that wanna get better quickly. It's our goal to watch every single one of you guys play, so watch this video all the way through and then look in the description below for instructions on how to send in a replay. Alright, you guys are here for some gameplay analysis, so let's begin with some clips from our very own Silver Midget at Pro Guides. <laughs> The first notable moment is the Bloom fight. The enemy player had the first shot, but Silver still challenged the fight. Most players would build here, and that's the right thing to do in solo, but not squads. His teammate would have been left to die if he were to turtle, so Silver fought back and won the duel. One mistake that I do have to point out is that Silver didn't build after the aim duel and ended up dropping down for no reason. The result of the duel is that Silver created space for an isolated 1v1. For this fight, Silver confused his opponent by repositioning over the top, and then followed up with the movement trick of moving down the ramp and then jumping for a peak shot. Repositioning during fights is high level stuff and is something that a lot of players don't consider enough. Watch the movement in this fight again to get an idea of how to move around effectively. The last highlight is again about movement. Strafe side by side, crouch and uncrouch while spraying. This type of movement was made popular by top pros like Mongrel and Poach. It seems like it's not a big deal, but seriously it makes a huge difference and it's not even hard to do. This clip was nice and was played pretty well, but let's move on to an example where Silver makes a few notable mistakes that you might be making as well. This ramp push might have looked clean at first, but there were actually a few mistakes. He could have been blasted by an edit play right here. All Silver had to do was put another line of cones and he would have prevented any of this from happening. Now he has to box up and let his teammates fight alone. Silver pushes out of the box knowing that there's an enemy on high ground. Push is totally fine but he never built any protection and lucked out because his opponent missed. However, he does redeem himself by replacing the roofs and walls and even begins tunneling. When in doubt, tunneling is effective. It's also a squad game, so he was able to depend on his teammates to bail him out. Another advantage of tunneling is that enemy players tend to forget about you, giving you an opportunity to edit out for a sneak attack. The last moment is the cone peak, which is a really minor detail, but most if not all pro players peak just like this. Crouching around a cone makes you really hard to see, so it's a really safe way to fight. Cone peeking behind metal is even better because you're virtually undetectable, so keep that in mind as well. Those critical errors that Silver made are easily fixable. Whenever you're pushing a high ground player, you must defend yourself. 
don't chance it, all you have to do is build a few roofs and you'll be safe. I hope you guys learned from these two clips because we're just getting started. Let's watch Jivli who was able to win an intense duo game all by him or herself. On the survey, you mark that your strength is your aim, your weakness is your building, your favorite way to fight is with an AR at mid-range, and that your goal is to learn how to rotate and fight in 1v2s. You're also on your own for pretty much the entire game, making the solo win really impressive. For your first fight, you were stranded on high ground for a long time, so I'm gonna skip to the part where you start fighting. Let's see how it plays out. You realize that the duo is separated and drop down for a quick pick. That was a good move not to thirst and build instead. That was a really awesome Tifu classic attempt there. We're also going to highlight what just happened right here, so keep this part in mind. That was a smart play right here to use the down player as bait and an even smarter move to reposition right after. That edit play was really scary for you, but regardless, you cleaned up the fight. All right, let's go back and see some highlights. Staying on high ground worked this time around, but next time you might want to play a bit faster. Being chopped down and then swarmed is an automatic way to lose. You had one opportunity to engage, but decided to build back up and then circle back to high ground. It seems scary, but you have to take the fight in these situations. You had a nice attempt at a Tifu Classic here, but there is one thing you could have done better. Right when you saw that metal ramp, you could have built a cone and then a wall, which would have sealed off your opponent. From there, you can follow up with an edit play. Zexro is actually really good at doing this, so check him out because he does it all the time. The idea behind a down edit was awesome. However, you had no idea where your opponent was. In fact, you even had your back turned to him. In the future, you need to know where your opponent is before you make a down edit or else you're at a major disadvantage. Overall, that was a solid 1v2. Let's move on to your next fight. You're in a really bad spot to start off, so really good by you to push aggressively. That was also a really fast reaction to build to the side. Right now, I'd be pretty scared of his or her teammate on your left. But besides that, that's really good recognition by you to edit through the top. Most players would have missed that. After some quick looting, you go for a high risk, high reward snipe, then push. You could have done some really cool things during this push, I'll break it down later, but I really like what I'm seeing overall. You even build the overhead ramp that I always talk about, and you're always going for chip damage. With the storm closing in, that's a good move to disengage. You even pick up the kill in the end to complete the 1v2. Let's go back and see what you could have done differently. Your first kill was really clean. You made the right choice to all in, but I want you to think about something for next time. You never once defended yourself against the second player. Sometimes you have to let the low health player live and deal with the second player, but you made up for it with a nice edit play. When you make your push here, you actually had a chance to cone your opponent and follow up with a wall. This is the same technique that I mentioned in your first play. Right here, you placed a ramp and had an opportunity to place a floor as well. The floor would have cornered your opponent into a double edit kill. The double edit isn't easy, it takes a lot of practice, but it seems like it fits your playstyle. As a follow up, your opponent actually took height from you, so you wrapped around. When you do this, you have to defend yourself. Silver made a similar mistake and you both got away with it this time, but next time, I don't think you're gonna get too lucky. Overall, I like the way you played this out. Practice the double edit and you'll start to do much better. Let's check out the final fight. This duo is gunning for you hard. You respond with a risky snipe, but luckily you weren't punished too badly. This player shouldn't have ever made it this far against you, but it's all right, you're making the right moves after. This was a really good all in. You can tell that Banana Man was not expecting you to play so aggressively. You also follow up with a nice disengage and another good all in. I'm gonna tell you a small trick to win fights like this a lot easier, but let's jump ahead to the final fight first. That was a good high ground peak right here, and man, these players are probably pretty new, so there isn't much to say here. All around, great win, but let's go back and break things down. You easily had the best position. You were right next to the zone with natural high ground. 
Despite this, you were sitting on a flimsy wooden ramp. This type of position needs to be invested in, so use metal and brick next time and make sure your base isn't flimsy. Here you definitely need to use your AR and SMG. This player was allowed to push you without cover for free. It's alright though, I do have to point out that I really liked your tracking right after, and of course that was a nice all in. This drop down was really risky because you were spam jumping to the point where you had fatigue. Try crouch spamming next time, it's way better all around. Think about how Silver was moving in that first example. There isn't much to say here, you clapped a few bots, but I would have liked to see better target selection. You had the first player dead to rights, but then you switched targets. A competent duo would have ended you right then and there. Jivli, it was a pleasure to watch your replay. Practice the building techniques that I mentioned, and I'm sure you'll be able to 1v2 much easier moving forward. Please let me know how you're doing in a few weeks, I'd love to hear back from you. The next replay is from Lair, whose strength is building, weakness is game sense, and favorite way to fight is up close and personal. Your goal with this analysis is to learn about rotations. First off, I can tell that you watched the entire Season 8 video, so I'm really happy that I was able to help you use the bus map to your advantage. If you haven't watched that video yet, you should definitely check it out. Anyways, let's see your first play. That peak was really dangerous, but it worked out, so I can't say much. I'm also really worried about this ramp push here, but it's all good, you close the distance. I'm also a huge fan of that cone right there, and man, that was a clean finish to the fight. Great stuff. Let's see what we could have done better. I like the hand cannon shot here, but you need to be a lot faster with it. You were out in the open for so long, so even if you lose accuracy, take the shot and live with the result. As for your push, I'm sure you know this already, but you need to ramp floor wall or else you're gonna get shot out. I'd also consider switching to brick or metal, something that players don't do often enough. I really like what you did when you closed the distance though. Your first cone to deny height, your edit, and your second cone were all awesome. However, you missed the final hit in the combo. You should have put a floor down and then edited for the all in. Even though it still worked out, keep that counter build in mind for the future for a more complete play. Let's move on to your next fight. Your decision not to ramp up anymore and just jump in might have seemed minor, but it was actually really smart. You were able to get a free shot and effective height. To finish the fight, you were also moving around unpredictably. One thing to remember is to crouch spam. You did it a few times here and it worked out really well. Let's see how you closed out the game. You're in prime gatekeeping position with natural height, similar to what we saw with Jivli. This game is basically yours to lose. You also made a similar mistake as Jivli. You need to be investing in this position. Use metal and brick the next time you have a spot like this. Right here, you break shield and engage. In terms of playing to improve, this is fine. However, this wasn't the play to win the game. You recovered though by committing to the play and going for the kill despite being third partied. We know how the game ends, so let's talk about rotations and how it won you the game. The bus moved from Pleasant Park to Lonely Lodge, and you dropped in the northeast corner of the map. I would consider that a medium risk drop since it's in line with the bus path. The circle even spawned on top of you so you kept looting and were never in a dangerous position, meaning that no one was really behind you. Eventually the circle closed and you snuck up on a player and claimed the best position. So far, you've shown nothing but smart rotations. People might not like this playstyle, but it's clearly effective. I think you're at the point where you have the groundwork of how rotations work. You just need to get out there and experience it from multiple perspectives. Everything aligned for you this time around, but it probably won't next time. Keep thinking about where players will be, the timing of when to rotate, and you're gonna improve. If you ever make a rotational mistake, then you have the knowledge to go back and find out what you did wrong. This was our very first community analysis video and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you want us to break down one of your games, the instructions of how to submit a replay are down below in the description. In the meantime, go to ProGuides.com to check out our free courses. You'll learn all the fresh techniques that pro players are using. If you liked the video, please click like and subscribe to the channel to be notified whenever we release a new video. That's it for us this time, I'll see you guys next time.